Some of you have been talking about J.C. Treader all offseason, and I guess that whole thing came to a close. And the Vikings were named. Welcome to the Locked On Vikings podcast. You are Locked On Vikings, your daily Minnesota Vikings podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Locked On Vikings podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. As always, I'm your host, your pal, and the kid you copied off in math class. My name is Luke Braun. You can find me on Twitter at Luke Braun NFL. Show is on Twitter at Locked On Vikings. And thank you so much for making Locked On Vikings your first listen of the day. We got some news to go over today. The Vikings named a punter. They the, the battle is over. We were robbed of our punt off. We'll get into that. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about what to expect from the Denver game and some of Kevin O'Connell's comments. But uh, really, I think the story that most people want to hear about, so we'll start it with it, is uh, J.C. Treader retiring. Now, J.C. Treader is not a Viking. He's never been a Viking. He was not even that close to becoming a Viking. But a lot of people really wanted him to be a Viking. Like, people were really, really into J.C. Treader. And I'm going to be honest, I never really got it. Like, I think I understand. Like, a lot of people just see that he had a high PFF grade. That's kind of all you need. And a lot of people are so desperate to replace Garrett Bradbury with anybody that they'll they'll go for made up names. I literally made up a name on Twitter and was like, Hey, would you rather have Garrett Bradbury or Jake Collins? Jake Collins is not a real person. I think there's a punter by that name from Northwestern from like five years ago. That's it. And people voted for him two to one. Like people are so desperate to get rid of Garrett Bradbury. It actually doesn't matter if the other guy is good. It just matters that he's different. And that that bugs me because we're not thinking anymore. We're we're, we're brains our brains turned off when we did that. Um, but alas, that's the way it is when you get a public enemy number one offensive line. You know, go all the way back to Matt Khalil, and then it was Elfline, and then it was Samia, and then it's any, whoever is the bad guy is going to be the bad guy and is worse than anybody we could ever imagine, even somebody who doesn't like literally doesn't exist. My hope is that if you're really really into J C Treader that you have reasons for it beyond I saw a PFF grade I liked. Like, not even PFF wants you to take them on that much, like, for that to be your only data point, right? Um, So, let's talk about Treader and what happened here. I was never that into it. He's old. He's got a really concerning, like, a mightily concerning injury history. Um, But he thinks he got blackballed. He says, I... You know, this is because I'm the NFLPA president. Nobody wants to sign me because nobody wants that headache, I guess. Um, In his article, he didn't really say like, and here's my evidence. And this is why he basically just said, hmm, nobody answered my calls. And I'm probably better than that. That's funny. And we'll circle back to that. But there's also J.C. Treader's knee thing. And also remember that Kwesi Adolfo was in the Cleveland front office witnessing all of this firsthand and probably knows about the medicals too, like way more intimately than we can or way more intimately even that, um, than other teams can. But Treader basically said, yeah, he's a free agent this year. And he says, well, I called a couple of teams. He said he'd call the Cowboys. That would be fun. And one of them was, hey, I called the Vikings because they were my childhood team and I like that. I grew up a Vikings fan. Um, and the Vikings didn't return his call. So they weren't interested at all. And to me, that is a signal, okay, so whatever is wrong there, it's like Quasi would know about it, right? And uh, look, Quasi has already shown that he's okay with off-the-field things. I wouldn't be too shocked to learn that uh, Mr. Wall Street isn't the biggest fan of union people. I'm stereotyping a little bit there, um, so grain of salt. But like, okay, sure, that might be the thing. Um, but you gotta, you gotta reach a little bit. You gotta take a little bit of a leap to say, well, no, he's just doesn't like he, the knee is actually fine and everything else is fine. And he's totally fine with paying money for a 33 year old center who is degenerative knee issues. It's really just the union. Like you kind of have to take a leap there. Um, but if that is the case, if that is happening, that's obviously horrible. Like, don't do that. That's a terrible thing. And it wouldn't be the first player to be blackballed from the NFL, like very famously Colin Kaepernick and, Joe Cap, shoot, let's go all the way back to Joe Cap. He was super blackballed because he sued the NFL, like pretty bla- brazenly, and he knew he was getting into that, and he got into that. So it certainly wouldn't be the first time. But J.C. Treader's knee, I can't get over it. In Treader's article at Sports Illustrated, he told the story of the whole first half of the season last year. He basically had to have fluid drained out of his knees. He had swelling issues, and he said, hey, that went away by week eight. 
but that doesn't take the degenerative part out about it. And so he had a meniscus trim. So we have once again come to a place where we should talk about how meniscus trims and repairs work because there are two different surgeries. So we are going to get into that. But for now, suffice it to say that J.C. Treader has that, that meniscus issue and that knee issue is not something that goes away because the swelling goes down. At least not if it's the same thing that Anthony Barr has, um, the same thing that Irv Smith declined to have. The reason he missed all of last season instead of just like four or five weeks is to prevent specifically like the issues that Barr and Treader are going through now so that he doesn't get those when he's older. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in depth with the, with the science. But the way I'll put it, I was never that into J.C. Treader. Um, I'm not as desperate to get off of Bradbury as everybody else is, but I do wish that they had brought in competition. I was really into a lot of draft picks. I'm still really into Lloyd Cushenberry. I'm way more into Lloyd Cushenberry than Treader. Why are we paying a bunch of money for a dude that can't walk when Lloyd Cushenberry could be out there, could be available for trade because of the Broncos situation, who's familiar, who's been a quality starter. He would be an upgrade over Bradbury and he'd be cheaper than Treader would be. And he would be a possible long-term option. Treader wouldn't be that. Um, I think that there's a pretty good chance that they draft a center in 2023. It's supposed to be a good class, so maybe you are just looking for a one-year bridge, but you don't necessarily want to paint yourself into that corner. Getting an, another center, like, I, I've seen it way too often, and on the Minnesota football party, I got into it with Sam Ekstrom over this a little bit, and he did something. I didn't call it out fast enough. I wish I called it out faster. But he did something that I, and a lot of people do, and they go, well, she, even on one knee, he's better than Bradbury. And it's like, well, probably not. He's not better than Bradbury if he can't take the field, right? And if, if he's not available and he's on sweats on the sideline, that's not better than Bradbury. Um, but also, that doesn't mean he's good, man. <laughs> like, that doesn't make him a good option. If you want to replace Bradbury, then I will seed that and say, okay, let's talk about how to do that. But that doesn't mean we have to drop all standards and start pining for people who don't exist, or for people who don't have knees, or for old people, or for bad people. I was like, Matt Paradis has come up in mailbags and stuff. That dude is dog. Like, that dude sucks. He's sucked for two years. He, he was a good, high price free agent a couple years ago, and he was a total disaster. We don't want any part of that. Replacing a bad center with another bad center doesn't fix the problem. It's just a different bad guy. And it just being different doesn't make you better. And different... Bad in a in an unfamiliar way is just the grass being greener on the other side of the fence. Let's go for a player who actually is good at this and is actually available. We don't have to settle for guys with big knee problems. But let me tell you what that knee problem is, because he insists that it's better. And like, sure, I mean, I'm not a doctor or anything, but this stupid Vikings have made me get to know a lot about menisci and <laughs> I want to inform you about that, or at least tell you what I know about it. And we'll also talk about the punting situation a little bit because the Vikings cut Jordan Berry and uh, there's some fallout from that. First things first, though, uh, let me talk to you about banking. Look, we all get into s tough situations. I I've been there, uh, especially when I was younger. The bank runs out of money and you are getting a paycheck tomorrow, but you need to get lunch or you need to put some ca gas in the tank or you need to get someone a birthday present. You just don't have that like 30 bucks or whatever lying around. That is what Dave is for. It's a banking app that can get you up to $500 in extra cash with no interest and no credit check needed. That's Dave. It is a banking app that can get you up to $500 with extra cash. So download the Dave app from the App Store right now, sign up for an extra cash account, and get up to $500 instantly. That's D-A-V-E. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member FDIC. If you are a patron of mine at patreon.com slash NFL, you can watch part five of the history of the Minnesota Vikings. It covers the 90s. Carter, Moss, John Randall, Denny Green, and that game. <laughs> it's the whole 90s. So uh, I, I hope you guys check it out. It's a much deeper one. It's There's a little more emotion to it because it's starting to get personal. I'm starting to have memories. Um, but also, I mean, a lot of those stories are just really, really good stories. There's a lot of good stories in the 90s. I hope you all check it out. Check out the Minnesota Football Party and check out the Ultimate Pro Football Preview. You can find that on Odyssey or wherever you find your favorite shows. Um, it's all of us locked on hosts doing a whole thing, getting all of our pieces in. 
And uh, that will start. You can find that on a separate podcast feed. Just search out Ultimate Pro Football Preview, and it starts on August 31st. Okay, let's talk about knees. So this stupid team has made me get to know a lot about knees, and you probably need to know about knees too, especially if you're going to pine for J.C. Treader. You should know exactly what he was dealing with. Now, he retired, by the way. He did not get any bites at all. So it wasn't just the Vikings. Um, but when he called, apparently Kevin O'Connell didn't, that didn't even get to the head coach. So whoever screens that or whoever makes the decision to narrow the pool, like you're not going to tell Kevin O'Connell about every single player whose agent calls you. That's just not practical. Um, so somebody is screening what is actually considering what, what we're considering, what we're not considering. And whoever made that decision pretty much hung it up right away. That person could have been Quasi. It could be Quasi saying, yeah, no, I was there in Cleveland and he couldn't practice because of his union president duties. And I don't like that. Or he could have said, yeah, I saw it. He's got the knee thing and he's older and I'm not into older. Let's, you know, I'm not into old and expensive, especially if he might not even play. So, um, here's the thing with knees. So Anthony Barr is like the perfect example of this because he had a very minor meniscus tear in his rookie year. And it's his surgery sort of went under the radar because the Vikings were were already eliminated from playoff contention was the end of 2014. Um, And they were eliminated when he went and got his surgery and it ended his season, but he only ended up missing like two games and he was fine by the next year. So nobody really paid it any mind, but there's two different surgeries that you can get. There's a major one and a minor one. Um, so when you're meniscus and that's your, your kneecap, your patella, and there is cartilage that keeps that from grinding up against the rest of your bones, right? That's the point of the meniscus. And if that, you know, angles the wrong way, if it twists the wrong way, if there's the wrong pressure on it, it will tear. It can be a minor tear or a major tear, but when it does tear, um, if it tears in such a way that pieces of it start to hang out, hang off, be out of place, Those pieces will rub up against stuff they're not supposed to rub up against, and that's pain, and with pain comes swelling, with swelling comes stiffness, and you can't play. That's what what the meniscus, you know, torn meniscus means, and there actually can be micro tears in the meniscus that you might not even know about. Um, Adrian Peterson played through that a little bit. A, A lot smaller tears, if they aren't causing, like if they aren't setting off any alarm bells in the body, the body might not even know about it. There's not nerves in there. Um, but when that damage messes up the whole system such that the nerves start to get irritated, that's where the pain can come. So JC Treader had a meniscus trim. I believe that's what he said in, in the SI article. The trim is the more minor procedure. It's arthroscopic. So that means small incision cameras. We're not opening you up like an ACL surgery. Um, but there's, they're not repairing it or they're not replacing that cartilage. They're not putting it together and getting it to actually heal. They're just taking whatever part is hanging off and doing the pain and, and irritating the nerve and they snip it off. And now you've just got a little bit less meniscus, just a smaller, just a little less cartilage, less material. Um, that's the trim. So that's the procedure that Anthony Barr got. The problem is if you have less meniscus, it wears out fast. It's like a brake pad. Take half the brake pad off. It's good. You're going to have to replace it twice, it off, twice as often. Um, and so that's why Anthony Barr's knee problems have been so bad. So I don't know how many games the Cowboys are going to get out of him. And if you sign J.C. Treader, there's no way to know if you're going to get six games or 13 games or no games, or is he going to get a tear because his, you know, tear something else because his, his weight distribution is all off now. There's no way to know, even if he feels perfectly healthy, Um, And it's not a great situation to get yourself into bed with. And like the Vikings, we know they're not satisfied with Bradbury. They're sniffing around centers. So they are a center interested team that turned this call away. That says more about JC Treader than it does about the Vikings, especially because other teams made the same decision. Now, if what that says about JC Treader is that they're blackballing him because he's because of his union stuff, then yeah, that sucks. That's a totally different conversation. Um, but whether it's that or the knee, from our perspective as Vikings fans, kind of the same idea. Whatever it is, people aren't interested in him, and we should probably turn our attention elsewhere. Um, I, I always, always, always in the offseason, there's always one name that people get too obsessed with. And so I'll always tell you, don't get hung up on one name. You want a center? Great. But there's more guys than J.C. Treader out there. Um, 
And the Vikings, I think they want a center. They seem like they want a center. But we'll see if Bradbury plays against Denver or if they end up trading for someone. Seems like there could be a move out, uh, on cut down day. At least that's been the rumor that's been swirling around for a while now. But where Treader's at right now, and a lot of his announcement was just kind of waxing poetic about how much more he can do for the union now that he's retired, which is all awesome. Um, but for him, if he were to try to play, you're essentially, it's like driving on a flat tire. You know, you have no idea what else you're going to damage because of, of that meniscus problem. And I kind of thought Barr would hang him up too. I was actually surprised to see that he came back to another team and we'll see what he can do for the Cowboys this year. There's just not enough meniscus. And that caused problems that he has been dealing with for the last two years that have prevented him from practicing. Sometimes he had to leave in the middle of practice to deal with NFLPA business, which I think is fair, but I wouldn't be surprised to learn if it bothered teams, if it bothered Quasi personally, who was there and would have seen that. It's just one guy, and it's one guy with a whole lot of flags. And just because we don't like the person who's in right now doesn't mean we should ignore the flags of everybody else. Yeah, if you're in a toxic relationship, the answer is not to break up with that person and get into a different toxic relationship, right? Um, so I, I probably talked enough about that. It is time to forget J.C. Treader. He was never an option. They never even returned his call. They didn't like it. They didn't want him, and nobody else did, and now he's out of the league, so there's never going to be a what could have been there either. Um, we have punter drama. We all, Lord knows, I love me some punter drama. And I also want to talk to you a little bit about uh, what to expect from the Denver game. But first things first, you can actually gramble on that game at betonline.net to pick them. Over under is 35 and a half. And uh, the market likes the Broncos just a little bit more, but not enough to make it a spread. So it's a pick them. You just pick your winner. Um, if you want to bet on something real, you can also bet on week one. You can bet on any game this season, all 262 or, or however many it is. You can bet on win win loss totals and over unders uh, for, for like prop bets. You can build any player prop bet with their player prop builder. You can do weird parlays there. That's my favorite place to do like wacky parlays. You can bet live right in the middle of a game with their live betting apparatus and so much more. You can find all of that at betonline.net where the game starts. So the other day, Matt Daniels uh, got up on the podium and he said there was a chance there'd be a punt off, right? He said we could have a punt off in Denver. I think that was the wording is we could have a punt off in Denver. Um, but he also said like, and we're going to look at other data, blah, blah, blah. Well, apparently that other data made the decision for him because uh, they decided the Vikings had Jordan Berry, the incumbent and a, an undrafted rookie in Ryan Wright. The thickest punter imaginable. Um, I think I saw it was a Dustin Baker tweet that he has the same height and weight as Derrick Henry as a punter. <laughs> so we got a punter linebacker, I guess. Um, and he kicked pretty well in the 49er game. And I guess that was enough for the Vikings to give him the job. I was pretty surprised by this, even though I put it in my 53-man roster yesterday, which is kind of funny. The, the episode went up. Um, the audio of the episode had been up all night, but the YouTube releases a little later it releases in the morning um and i think the youtube released about a half an hour before that news broke so a lot of people were like what are you talking about the punter is there <laughs> y'all on youtube i this go <laughs> i record these the night before i don't know what happens in the morning <laughs> and whatever it is you know i'll always get to it the next day it's a daily show about your minnesota vikings subscribe wherever you find your favorite podcasts <laughs> so ryan writes the punter this is a merit decision. There is not really a reason to do this. Like sometimes, you know, you've got a punter on a $2 million deal and you're trying to save money. Not the case. The difference is uh, about $200,000 in cap space is what they save in total because Jordan Berry was not very expensive. I don't think it's an age thing and it's it wasn't like Jordan Berry's seat was all that hot. But this is why I say when it comes to specialists, always bring in a competition. Every single time, I would say, even if you have Justin Tucker, I would always bring in a random undrafted rookie just to keep him on his toes, right? Just to make him beat someone. And hey, if it's Justin Tucker and you go, well, he'll beat any undrafted free agent. Easy. Why would you even bother? Then there won't be a problem. The guy will get cut and thanks for your time. Um, but every single time I would bring in an undrafted guy because you never know when you might accidentally be stumbling upon Justin Tucker, who was undrafted himself. Um, Competition is just always good. I would just always make them do it. and. Part of it is that this is why. Maybe they just stumbled upon a really good punter. Maybe they didn't. Um, there is one concern 
So Greg Joseph has had a fantastic camp, really good preseason and all that. He's missed a little bit. I mean, no, nobody's going to be perfect in camp. But the only couple of misses that the beat reporters have uh, reported also came on a day when they were messing with the holders. And they had Ryan Wright in, and he held for two, and both of those were misses. Nobody saw if it was a bad hold or if the hold was the problem or whatever. Sometimes it just takes the timing needs to get ironed out. Um, but they had a much bigger sample than those two games. So I'm going to guess that what I, they're not con- like, it's not like they forgot about holding. <laughs> like they're, they're just not concerned about it. Um, but it's something to watch if Greg Joseph has a big problem. Maybe we'll look and see if the timing's wrong or something. Um, but he did have a really good camp. So I don't know. It's, I, I'm not going to treat it as a problem until it actually becomes one, but predicting that it's one, I don't think gets us anywhere. So it's Ryan Wright and Jordan Berry goes off. Jordan Berry should end up with a team. He is a quality punter. If you are a fan of another team and you're scouting out, Hey, what about that Vikings punter? Maybe Jordan Berry will get signed and somebody will come listen to this one. Um, Jordan Berry's a good punter. He was solid. He put the ball where he was asked to put it. Uh, he got decent hang time on it. Very little to complain about with Jordan Berry. Maybe they just, I don't know, found some super talented young youngster that they fell in love with and we'll see if it works out. Um, So that means we can focus on everything else in the Denver game. The big thing is probably going to be what happens at quarterback. Sounds like Nick Mullins is going to go. O'Connell's being cheeky about um, if he's going to play yet, but he says, oh, we love his progress and we're really, really happy. And it's kind of just a matter of, is he going to know the playbook well enough to have reps against Denver even be useful, right? Like, will he be able, will will they do anything? Will those practice reps do anything or will he just be lost in the sauce? Um, Sounds like he'll probably go. Though I, I would be surprised if Nick Mullins did not go. Um, Sean Mannion has taken all the second team reps. Bummer for Kellen Mond. <laughs> that really stinks. But of those three, like I wouldn't be shocked if we saw all three of them. Um, in my 53 man roster, I'm only keeping Mullins. But for Mannion and Mond, they are competing for a roster spot here. I mean, they are trying to prove, hey, I belong on the 53. And with both of them, I haven't seen it. And what we've seen in the preseason, Mond looked better than last preseason, and there is some positive to be gleaned there. But right now, I don't see keeping them on the roster as worth a spot. Um, The developmental arc is too far off and too unlikely for Kellen Mond, non-existent for Sean Mannion. Um, It's just too unlikely to really bet anything on it. So I don't see it. But that's why they get another game. And if Kellen Mond can go ball out and he can change my mind. I am perfectly open to that happening. We'll see how all that happens. Um, other people to watch. I think Troy Dye is in a lot of trouble. Uh, he got hurt in practice. He went off the field. Um, and I think he was kind of on the roster bubble. And so you're going to see guys like Blake Lynch and Chaz Surratt be able to maybe push for that fourth inside linebacker job. I think there will be four on the roster. Um, and there might be an opening at that fourth one because Die has not had a good camp. And if he can't go in this preseason game, he's lost the final chance to redeem himself. Um, I would say Blake Lynch is the front runner to take it over. And Chaz is a very, very long shot dark horse. Uh, those are the two that I would be watching for that. Elsewhere on the roster, um, I would be interested to see if they make Ed Ingram play. They might just make him play because he's a rookie and they're getting tread on his tires. I still foresee that he has won the starting job. I would be very surprised and probably pretty upset if they didn't start him. I think he's outplayed Jesse Davis by quite a bit. Um, I think it would be very bad if they didn't start him, but I think he will. And I think maybe they still just would want to play him in the preseason, get a lot of reps on him and he's young, his body can handle it. Um, Maybe some running back intrigue, maybe some wide receiver intrigue. Of course, there's a little bit of stuff going on at the bottom of that roster. You still have the Tristan Jacksons and Myron Mitchells with their last chance. Um, I think that they lost the job against the 49ers. They both had blips in their game that I think were a little too much. But again, you get a chance to redeem yourself. Go have the game of your life and something can happen, right? If you have a T.Y. McGill-sized game, like T.Y. McGill made his case, kind of, you have to roster me. But if T.Y. McGill comes out and sucks... And he did have some problems in the 49er game. Like there were negative reps on that tape, not enough to overshadow the awesome game he had, but they were there. And if more of them happen against Denver and suddenly you're thinking about it, um, 
that can turn what felt like a sure thing into way less of a sure thing. That's the kind of stuff we're looking for in the Denver game. Position battle things and I mean, all these things are going to iron out. There's like five or six spots that aren't sure. Everything else seems pretty much ironed. Um, but there's like five or six spots that aren't sure. And those guys are going to be the ones fighting for their lives. You want to see somebody play like it's a Super Bowl. Watch a player on the roster bubble in the last preseason game. There's just nothing like it. Uh, whatever happens, we'll break it down um, tomorrow. We'll talk about it. Or on, on Monday, I mean, we'll talk about it. So I'll see you all then. And as always, skull.